students. Welcome to the lecture on operating systems. And after the lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Understand the concept on operating systems. Describe the function and types of operating system. Discuss computer organization. Define memory and storage management. Explain the file management system. An operating system is a program which acts as an interface between computer system users and the computer hardware. It provides a user-friendly environment in which a user may easily develop and execute programs. Types of operating systems. The best known operating systems are those used on personal computers. Microsoft Windows, Mac OS X, Linux. So what is an operating system? In simple terms, it is the chief program that manages all of the hardware and software. It has control of every process, file, section of memory, and device. It is very important, as it works as a middleman, making sure both hardware and software interact correctly. Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and Unix are the big operating system contenders and all have their own advantages and or disadvantages, but they are all based off the same concept. There are four essential managers of every operating system, and they all work together like a team to get jobs completed. The operating system works as their boss and makes sure they are all working in harmony. The memory manager is in charge of the main memory. It scans every request for memory space and checks if it is valid. It allows allocation of memory spaces that are not taken up already. Memory spaces may need to be deallocated to free up space for other requests. The process manager decides how to allocate the brain of the computer, known as the central processing unit. It is necessary that the process manager keeps track of the status of each process. It has to handle jobs as they enter the system, and manage each process that is associated with those jobs. The device manager monitors every device, channel, and control unit. It has to choose the most efficient way to allocate all of the system devices that are connected to the computer. USB sticks, printers, and external hard drives are examples of this. The file manager checks every type of file that is on the system. This means data files, program files, compilers, and installed applications. It sets permissions so that certain users can only see certain files. So when you log into your guest account, you cannot browse through the administrator's files, as you do not have the permission to do so. Another manager worth mentioning is the network manager. This provides a way for users to share hardware and software resources while also controlling the user's access to them. So, we now understand how it works under the hood. So, how do we, the user, interact with the operating system? We rely on the use of a user interface. This gives us a visual understanding of what we are trying to do when we interact with the system. So, when you click and hold a file to move it into a folder, you're making the managers work to carry out the request. Now we will understand the concept of operating system. Application of operating system. The applications of operating system are in a multitasking operating system where multiple programs can be running at the same time. The operating system determines which applications should run, in what order, and how much time should be allowed for each application before giving another application a turn. The OS manages the sharing of internal memory among multiple applications. 
The OS handles input and output to and from attached hardware devices such as hard disks, printers, and dial-up ports. The OS sends messages to each application or interactive user about the status of operation and any errors that may have occurred. The OS sends messages to each application or interactive user about the status of operation and any errors that may have occurred. The OS can offload the management of what are called batch jobs so that the initiating application is freed from this work. On computers that can provide parallel processing, an operating system can manage how to divide the program so that it runs on more than one processor at a time. Let's discuss about the function and types of operating system. Memory Management The operating system determines the amount of memory required for the program's instructions and for data. It allocates the amount of memory required and loads the program into RAM. File Input Output Management one of the most important functions of an operating system is to manage the file input and the output. It manages the files stored on hard disk and other storage devices. Device Input Output Management The important function on an operating system is to manage the input and output devices. It plays a role of an interpreter for various devices and language. 1. Real-Time Operating System, RTOS. Real-time operating systems are used to control machinery, scientific instruments, and industrial systems. An RTOS typically has very little user interface capability and no end-user utilities, since the system will be a sealed box when delivered for use. 2. Single User and Single Task. As the name implies, this operating system is designed to manage the computer so that one user can effectively do one thing at a time. 3. Single user and multitasking. This is the type of operating system most people use on their desktop and laptop computers today. Microsoft's Windows and Apple's Mac OS platforms are both examples of operating systems that will let a single user have several programs in operation at the same time. 4. Multi-User Multi-user operating system allows many different users to take advantage of the computer's resources simultaneously. Unix, VMS, and mainframe operating systems such as MVS are examples of multi-user operating systems. 5. Network Operating System A network operating system, NOS, is software that controls a network and its message. Example, packet, traffic, and queues controls access by multiple users to network resources such as files and provides for certain administrative functions including security, Windgate, Cisco IOS, and BSD are some of the examples of NOS. 6. Distributed Operating System Distributed systems are very much like traditional operating systems. First, they act as resource managers for the underlying hardware, allowing multiple users and applications to share resources such as CPUs, memories, peripheral devices, the network, and data of all kinds. Maintenance and troubleshooting of computer system. Check the connections. Make sure all the connections are secure. If the mouse is not working or the keyboard or any of the peripherals, first thing one should check are the connections. Reboot. 
Sometimes a simple control alt delete will get out of a screen freeze. Other times it may have to be just shut down. Last resort. Wait about one minute and power it back up. Safe mode. Starting in safe mode allows running the computer with a minimal amount of drivers utilizing only the mouse, keyboard, and monitor. Diagnostic procedures. Troubleshooting is a systematic approach to finding the cause of a computer-related problem. By some basic troubleshooting rules, one can isolate problem areas with ease. Establish priorities. Before beginning, decide what the priorities are. One may find it more important to recover data than to get the system running optimally. Isolate the problem. What was the state of the system when the error arose? One should then attempt to replicate the error and find out if the problem is software or hardware related by noting any recent changes to the system such as component upgrades, device driver or firmware updates, or software patches. Hardware tools. It is useful to keep all hardware tools in a box designated for troubleshooting a computer. Most cards and accessories in a computer are fixed to the back plate using Phillips screws. So it will need to have at least one medium sized Phillips head screwdriver. Software tools. Antivirus software on disks enables to scan for viruses when he or she are troubleshooting a PC for problems. Antivirus software can detect and eliminate existing viruses, as well as protect the computer system from future virus attacks. Measurement tools. There is a variety of electronic equipment used to diagnose hardware problems. The most basic item we'll need is a millimeter. A millimeter is a single instrument that measures electrical current amperes. Now, we will talk about computer organization. Computer organization refers to the operational units and their interconnections that realize the architectural specifications. Computer organization deals with the structured relationship that are not visible to programmer and also refers to how operational attributes are linked together to realize the architecture specifications. These are the things that we are going to discuss in this chapter. There is the basic memory circuits, organization of uh, main memory, cache memory, virtual memory, and then the secondary storage. These are the different uh, categories of memories. Actually, we need to think one thing. Does uh, we require all these categories? Memory circuit, okay. Main memory, cache memory, virtual memory, secondary storage. Absolutely, we can say that uh, all these memories are mandatory for us. Why? Because in today's world, we need to, uh, we have a every user or every person thinks just like uh, I have a memory with increased size, increased speed and with a low cost. Absolutely, that is, this is not possible in today's world well, because if we have the memory with increased size and of course it may be take a cost less but the speed is also less. If you want a more speedest device it will take uh, more cost. So to satisfy all these requirements that is size, speed and cost criteria we require all these memories called main memory, cache memory, virtual memory, secondary storage and some other extra storage devices whatever it may be in the world. Right? To synchronize all these memories we require different memories. Let's enter into the topic basic memory circuits. In the basic memory circuits the first topic reveals about the different uh, circuits for designing such a kind of memories that main memory and secondary memory and so on and they discuss about the cache memory and then virtual memory mechanism and the secondary storage mechanism. In the today's session, we will discuss about some basic concepts of memory. That is the basic introduction about the memory concepts. Right. In this memory concepts, the maximum size of the memory that can be used in any computer determined by the addressing scheme. That is the most generally used pronunciation called 16-bit computer, 32-bit computer or 64-bit computer 
what does it mean is uh, if, that it, if I said uh, my computer is 32 bit computer that is the processor can able to do its operations in a 32 bit manner if I'm using 64 bit computer the processor can able to do its operations in a 64 bit approach that is the processor can able to allocate 32 bit address length or 64 bit address length if my computer consists of 16 bit addresses it can able to generate 2 power 16 that is 64 memory locations on the computer if I'm using a 32 bit computer <coughs> that is 2 power 32 around uh, 4 GB if I'm using 40 bit it's only around 1 tera address locations it's uh, too fast then think two if it's a 64 bit uh, it can generate uh, <coughs> so many teras right Mo most modern computers are byte addressable what does it mean uh, the byte addressability is a basic concept which assigns addresses for the bytes rather than words here the word is a combination of bits or group of bytes that is if i said if it is a 16 bit or 32 bit or 64 bit computer if i am taking example of 32 bit computer if my computer is a 32 bit computer each word size is 32 bit right in the in the, in the to total 32 bit we have totally four addresses that is four bytes four bytes consists of four addresses right how we can give the addresses and remember one thing the processor must and surely takes the data in the form of words if i want if the, if the processor wants to access the data from this uh, first byte it can directly select the entire word that is 0 1 2 3 the processor selects these four bytes of information and of course it may takes the only required byte required byte information but it selects the entire word right how to assign these addresses suppose if i'm taking 2 power 16 16 bit addresses 2 power 16 is totally 64,000 memory locations, 64k memory locations. So it starts from 0 to 2 power k minus 1. Here k denotes 16. If it is 16 bit, 32. If it is 32, 2 power 32 minus 1, 64, 2 power 64 minus 1, and so on. Hardware assembling. Simply, hardware assembly means how to assemble the parts of the computer, PC, so the PC is made a good PC. Some steps to building a computer is acquiring the parts, and these are Internal parts Power supply, PSU Power supply unit converts outlet power, which is alternating current, AC, to direct current, DC, which is required by internal components, as well as providing appropriate voltages and currents for these internal components. Motherboard, main board. As the name indicates, this is the electronic centerpiece of the computer. Everything else connects to the motherboard. Processor, CPU. Central processing unit, the brain of the computer. Most actual computation takes place here. RAM, random access memory, the short term memory of a computer used by the CPU to store program instructions and data upon which it is currently operating. Storage. Either HDD and or SSD, the long-term memory of the computer, used for persistent storage example. The things stored on it remain even when the computer is powered down. Optional components follow. Optical drive. Device for reading, writing optical discs. May read CDs, DVDs, or other optical media depending on the type. GPU, graphics card, GPU. Does processing relating to video output. Some motherboards have an onboard GPU built in, so one does not need a separate video card. Sound card, comes with motherboard but may want to be upgraded. External input device used to type data into some sort of computer system, whether it is a mobile device, a personal computer, or another electronic machine. Mouse, a hand-operated electronic device that controls the coordinates of a cursor on the computer screen, 
as one moves it around on a pad. Monitor. In computers, a monitor is a computer display and related parts, packaged in a physical unit that is separate from other parts of the computer. Familiar with hardware peripherals. Hardware peripheral is a piece of computer hardware that is added to a computer in order to expand its abilities. Buses. A bus is a subsystem that transfers data between computer components inside a computer or between computers. Unlike a point-to-point -point connection, a bus can logically connect several peripherals over the same set of wires. Internal. There are many different kinds of internal buses, but only a handful of popular ones. Different computers come with different kinds and number of slots. It is important to know what kind and number of slots one has on the computer before one goes out and buys a card that matches up to a slot. PCI, Peripheral Component Interconnect. PCI is common in modern PCs. This kind of bus is being succeeded by PCI Express. Typical PCI cards used in PCs include network cards, sound cards, modems, extra ports such as USB, serial, TV tuner cards, and disk controllers. PCI Express. The PCI Express was introduced by Intel in 2004. It was designed to replace the general purpose PCI expansion bus and the AGP graphics card interface. PCI Express is not a bus, but instead a point-to-point -point connection of serial links called lanes. Accelerated Graphics Port, AGP. The AGP is a high-speed point-to-point channel for attaching a graphics card to a computer's motherboard, primarily to assist in the acceleration of 3D computer graphics. AGP has been replaced over the past couple years by PCI Express. Types of cards. Video card. A video card, also known as graphics card, is an expansion card whose function is to generate and output images to a display. Some video cards offer added functions such as video capture, TV tuner adapter, ability to connect multiple monitors, and others. Sound card. A sound card is an expansion card that facilitates the input and output of audio signals to and from a computer under control of computer programs. Network card. A network card is an expansion card that allows computers to communicate over a computer network. It allows users to connect to each other either by using cables or wirelessly. Devices. Removable storage. The same kinds of CD and DVD drives that could come built in on the computer can also be attached externally. Non-removable storage. Non-removable storage can be a hard drive that is connected externally. External hard drives have become very popular for backups, shared drives among many computers, and simply expanding the amount of hard drive space one has from the internal hard drive. External hard drives come in many shapes and sizes like flash drives do. Input. Input devices are absolutely crucial to computers. The most common input devices are mice and keyboards, which every computer has. Output. There are lots of different kinds of output devices that one can get for the computer. The absolute most common external output device is a monitor. Other very popular output devices are printers and speakers. Let's now talk about memory and storage management. Memory management is the process of controlling and coordinating computer memory assigning portions called blocks to various running programs to optimize overall system performance. One, 
high speed cache. This is fast, relatively small amounts of memory that are available to the CPU through the fastest connections. Cache controllers predict which pieces of data the CPU will need next and pull it from the main memory into high speed cache to speed up system performance. 2. Main memory. This storage device is used by a computer to hold the currently executing program and its working data. A modern computer's main memory is built from random access memory integrated circuits. 3. Secondary memory. Secondary memory refers to storage devices such as hard drives and solid state drives. It may also refer to removable storage media such as USB flash drives, CDs, and DVDs. File Management System The File Management System, FMS, is the subsystem of an operating system that manages the data storage organization on disk and provides services to processes related to file access. The aims of File Management System are Data management. An FMS should provide data management services to the applications through convenient abstractions, simplifying and making device independent the common operations involved in data access and modification. Generality with respect to storage devices. The FMS data abstractions and access methods should remain unchanged, irrespective of the devices involved in data storage. Validity. An FMS should guarantee that at any given moment, the stored data reflect the operations performed on them, regardless of the time delays involved in actually performing those operations. Protection. Illegal or potentially dangerous operations on the data should be controlled by the FMS by enforcing a well-defined data protection policy. Concurrency. In multi-programming systems, concurrent access to the data should be allowed with minimal differences with respect to single process access, say for access synchronization enforcement performance. The functionalities should be offered, achieving at the same time a good compromise in terms of data access speed and data transferring rate. Distributed system. A distributed system is one in which hardware and software components located at remote networked computers coordinate and communicate their actions only by passing messages. Any distance may separate computers in the network. A distributed system must have some characteristics like fault tolerant. It can recover from component failures without performing incorrect actions. Highly available. It can restore operations, permitting it to resume, providing services even when some components have failed. Recoverable. Failed components can restart themselves and rejoin the system after the cause of failure has been repaired. Consistent. The system can coordinate actions by multiple components, often in the presence of concurrency and failure. This underlies the ability of a distributed system to act like a non-distributed system. Scalable. It can operate correctly, even as some aspect of the system is scaled to a larger size. Now, in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. An operating system is a program which acts as an interface between computer systems users and the computer hardware. An operating system is the most important software that runs on a computer. It manages the computer's memory, processes, and all of its software and hardware. Mobile devices, such as tablets and smartphones, also include operating systems 
that provide a GUI and can run applications. Common mobile OS is including Android, iOS, and Windows Phone. An assembly language program is translated into the target computer's machine code by a utility program called an assembler. Computer organization refers to the operational units and their interconnections that realize the architectural specifications.